When we look at the Google search results made by people around the world, we can see that even though we all might search for the same keyword, the results are different. And this difference is not coincidental. It's produced by algorithms. Algorithms are complex codes that largely determine how information is flowing online and that decides what information appears on our screens. Google, for instance, uses 57 different signals to generate personally tailored information, ranging from our geolocation, the type of device and browser we are using, to our digital footprint and browsing history. If you go to Google and make a search, and your neighbor makes a search and your neighbor makes a search, they will be different because Google understands your context. They understand where you've searched before, what you've looked for before. It learns about you. It understands where you are, what time of day it is. Whether you're Google or Facebook, they tend to call this signals. And the truth is that Google and Facebook are in the signal generation business. That's why Google has telephones, because it's a great signal generator. It knows where you are, where you're going, what you've done in the past, and it can then try to anticipate your needs. So when you make a simple request for a search on Google, you're not just searching some neutral body of knowledge through a neutral algorithm. Instead, Google is your agent. And based on what it knows about you, based on the signals that it has gathered about you in the past, it's going to try to give you the best possible answer it can. Indeed, even before you ask for the search, Google will try to anticipate your needs. So now if you use a smartphone, uh, if you use an Android phone with, uh, with Google Assistant, uh, it'll be telling you that uh, you have an appointment coming up. It'll be showing you your, your plane uh, reservation and what you should do about that and how long you should leave to get to the airport. These are the beginnings of Google anticipating and thinking for you. Think about what that means. It means that there is no more neutral internet. The processes for which information arrives on our screens and enters into our minds are far less all-viewing, multifaceted and diverse than we tend to think. Asked by a journalist about the algorithmic logic of the Facebook news feed, Mark Zuckerberg answered that a squirrel dying in front of your house may be more relevant to your interests right now than people dying in Africa. What this means is that we have moved into a world where digital new media shows us things that it thinks we want to see, but not necessarily what we think we want or need to see. As Eric Schmidt, the CEO of Google said, it will be very hard for people to watch or consume something that has not in some sense been tailored for them. In other words, the algorithmic nature of digital new media platforms generates a filter bubble, where we as media consumers no longer decide what enters into our screens and what is edited out. With regards to world politics and war, this algorithmic logic of gatekeeping revolts against the idea of a balanced viewing, because the technology itself unbeknownst to most of us users, generates the information that the system itself thinks best fits our political interests. We no longer decide what is relevant, important, uncomfortable or challenging to our worldview. Instead, with algorithms increasingly deciding what we get to see, and perhaps more importantly, what we do not get to see, digital technology has moved us further away rather than closer to the idea that we are exposed towards a multitude and diversity of views about world politics.